Today I will talk about how you can choose your first sector. I think this decision can have a great impact on your game. All grey sectors are possible locations for your first outpost. Your large transport already carries one and you can drop it in any of these. But first you should spend some time to scout for a suitable spot. The galaxy is still running some sort of restricted mode and you got time. Factions will only invade each other. All neutral sectors will stay for you to choose from. Once you drop your first outpost, this protection will be lifted slightly. All empty sectors will become valid targets for NPCs too. But at this point they will still claim very few of them and leave the majority for you. Only after a certain point in the main story, which you have to trigger, any remaining empty sectors will be taken swiftly. But to get there you already need a functional basic empire. Over the course of a game you will even see new empty sectors being created for various reasons. I'm just including all this information to make it clear that you don't need to seek a pole position for early land grabbing. Claiming all sectors shouldn't be your top priority. Take this area here for example. Plenty of empty space, ready to house many factories. You could expand very quickly here. But expect a hard time if you do. You will be the prime target for Xenon patrols from these three sectors here. All these empty sectors will probably lure you into claiming a lot of them. And the Xenon will scale their patrol sizes up, based on your sector count. This choke point in Perdition's End will see frequent Xenon activity on their way up north into the Teladi area. If you are sitting here, you could lose space superiority in your own sector completely. Much of this whole area here won't go anywhere until you've defeated all Xenon sectors to progress your main plot. It is well suited for future expansion, but would make for a rather poor start. I know that a player empire would fit in perfectly in a spot like this, but I definitely cannot recommend that you start in here. What you should be looking for instead are small empty space clusters close to other factions. The very early game asks for quick access to NPC factories. You need to buy your first building material, you need to make some money with trading. Maybe you also want to import food from NPC outposts. Police fleets can provide you with a certain level of protection and any hostiles have more targets overall, which makes it a bit easier for your own ships to blend in. If you want a really safe start, you could go for a single isolated sector, completely surrounded by other factions, like Themis Orcus here. But I don't recommend that either. You will need an additional, or better, two additional outposts just to cover your most basic needs in terms of ship production. To get the most important production perks without spending all your perk points on these things. Of the remaining locations you won't find a perfect place, so don't search forever. The first thing to consider is security. It's no big deal if a pirate base or a Xenon sector is close to you. Complete security will be very rare and it isn't necessary. At least if you don't spam claim new sectors. But you should keep some distance to sectors with very high abnormal signals. The red warning should already raise some suspicion. See, your first outposts will likely level up their production bonus very high. They will become extremely valuable to your empire. Let's just say that you are running a certain risk to lose all sectors close to these red and very high abnormal signals. That doesn't need to be the case and it will only be relevant in later stages of the plot, but keep this in mind and at least try to keep the risk low. Also check NPC sectors right next to you. These signals will be everywhere, so you won't be able to avoid all of them. Just try to minimize the amount of red warnings in your immediate surroundings, if you can. A very helpful sector trait during early game is a high station support limit. You can put more factories in these sectors, which allows you to play your economic game very tall. You can keep your overall sector count and with it Xenon and Pirate scaling low, but your station count can be fairly high. 
truly a big advantage, as long as your military capabilities are still limited. A high population cap is also valuable, as it increases production speed in your local outpost and also provides free waste generation as an additional economic boost. You can't really utilize the high production speed yet, because you won't have the resources to build constantly. But it will become important rather soon, especially for ship production. So if you've got a high population sector in your starting area, you should secure it soon and make it your primary shipyard. The waste generation from your people will be helpful immediately as it's a free resource for your factories. Research speed and the ability to research Terran ships with the memories scattered all over the map are great too, but you will also get plenty opportunities to set up dedicated research sectors later in the game. Research isn't a starting priority for me. It will take you some time to get the first research station up, and the data scanner can already unlock up to medium-sized ships with reasonable effort. High sun intensity is another great economy boost. At maximum you can basically get three solar plants in one. Energy cells aren't used as widespread in the new economy, but equipment production relies heavily on them. Always nice to have. Access to asteroids could also be on your list. For me it is a lesser factor. Most sectors will have a few rocks and the yield for ore actually doesn't matter that much. You only need a yield of 50 to already get the maximum efficiency. An ore mine with a rock with 100 yield will produce the same as a 50 yield one. Only if your yield is 49 or below, your mine's efficiency will be 50%. Food can be another concern, and I think this issue may divide the player base. My take on the matter is that you can always just disable this issue with a perk. And I think in many cases it is worth to take the no food perk on your first sector. But you can also save the perk point if you manage to find a compatible food sector very close nearby. Over the course of a game you will unlock all food variants anyway. It's mostly just the early game which can be a bit tricky. Just don't put too much emphasis on the whole food system. For example, never start in two sectors with crazy high abnormal signals, just because they were food compatible. This would be like removing the braking system on your car to reduce weight. At first you get a bonus, but how long will it last you? 